Hello everyone, in my last videos I got a lot of requests to talk about how I edit my shots, but instead of creating one or two very long videos on how I edit multiple shots, I want to create a new video every two weeks where I edit one shot at a time. And this will allow me to use those different devices, so today I have my cell phone, next time I might use an iPad, I could use my computer also, and it's also going to allow me to use different apps, so today we're using Google Photos, next time I'm thinking of using Snapseed, and I'm probably going to use Lightroom in the future too. The photo I decided to edit today is a picture of a water droplets on a branch. And one problem I have with pictures coming from the Pixel phones, and it's actually a problem for most smartphones, is that they're always a little bit underexposed because they prefer to underexpose a shot than having blown out highlights. So this is a very simple edit we're going to do inside of Google Photos uh, that works either on smartphones uh, that are Android or iOS if you have an iPhone. Now let's edit this shot. Because it's a portrait mode shot, it's actually going to be a JPEG, so we don't have a raw picture in this case. You only get raw pictures when you're using the normal mode or the night sight mode. Uh, but if we come in the settings here, we're still going to be able to recover a little bit of information. And if you look at right here, we have some AI suggestions. So here we have Enhance that brings back some of the contrast and some of the brightness, which is what we want to do in our case. There's black and white and color pop. And these change each time you open a new picture. And the interface for the Google Photos is a little bit different on iPhone and Android. Android got a new version recently to make it a little bit easier to use. Uh, but the settings are exactly the same and you can use any other editing app. You're going to have the same options too. So you don't need to use uh, exactly this one to do the edit we're going to be doing today. But now if you move inside of crop here, so I don't like the fact that here it's all blurry in the background and that we really don't have a lot of space on this side here and we have a lot of space on this side of the water droplets. So we're going to come inside of here and we're going to resize it. And if we see here, we can actually resize it as we want. Uh, but I don't want that. I actually want to come here inside of this uh, ratio and select the original one. So we're going to put the original ratio and now we're just going to scale it down to have a, about the same spacing on this side and this side of the water droplets. But you don't want to have a branch here that's like half inside of the shot. So we're going to bring it back up here quite a lot to make sure uh, we get this branch nice and inside so we get a better composition. So once we're happy with the crop, we can come in the next tab right here. And like it's a portrait mode shot, we can actually edit the blur here. And I think um, it's a little bit too intense right here. And you can actually click on the picture here and it's going to change the point where they apply the focus. So if we come right here and the center, that's about where I want it. I'm actually going to bring it down to about 40 here. And we're going to see we get a lot more of the branch here in focus, which is what I want. I want to have most of the water uh, droplets in focus and only the background to be blurry. So I think even a little bit less here is going to be pretty good. The next thing you can look at is depth. And we're not going to touch this. This changes uh, where the blur is being applied. Uh, but in our case, it was actually already pretty good. Uh, color focus is if you wanted to keep like only the green here, you could select green and only keep green, but that's not what we're trying to do. So we're not going to use it here. Uh, we're going to come here first in the brightness and we're going to bring it up quite a lot here. And it might not look really good right now, but that's actually okay because the next steps are going to bring back uh, the exposure and the contrast to something that's a little bit better. So usually when you bring up the brightness, you want to go in right away inside of contrast here and just bring it up to bring back some of the details and some of the separation in the highlights and the shadows. Then we're going to come in the white point and we want to bring them up just to make the white even more wider. And then we're going to come and highlight and we're going to bring it down. So why I use a highlights uh, down and white points up is that white point is going to allow to create a little bit more white inside of the picture and a little bit brighter. But I don't want the highlights to be overblown. So I just want to make sure that the highlights are not at the maximum. Then we're going to come in shadows and shadows are actually pretty okay, but I might just bring them down a little bit to bring a little bit uh, contrast back. And then we're really going to bring down the black point because this is what is going to bring back some contrast in the shot here. So we can see that if we go down too much, it's too much. But if we bring it down to around, let's say minus 18, it's pretty good. Then if we go on saturation here, this is one place where most beginners do the error of going too far. So if you bring it up completely here, you can see it adds a lot of color inside of the shot, but this doesn't look good at all. So you want to be very careful when you use saturation to just add a little bit, but not too much. So I would say something around uh, 15 is pretty good in this case. We're not going to add warmth inside of the picture because it's a JPEG and JPEG already has the color temperature baked in. So even if we play fit, it doesn't give 
to good results and actually pixel phones are really good to have the right color temperature right away and same thing for the tint we don't want to touch to that skin tones also we don't have any people inside of the shot so we're not going to play with the skin tones uh, we're going to leave it to its default and then we have blue tones here um, that allow us to bring some blue out or not. This is great for when you have a sky and you want to make the sky a little bit more blue. And then we have the option here that's pop. I don't like using this setting at all. Uh, if you bring it to the max here, and this is a trick actually when you're not sure what an effect does on the picture, you can bring it to it max, its max and you're going to see right away how it affects the picture. So if you bring it here, you can see I think it doesn't look good at all. Uh, adding too much pop, maybe add one or two just to bring back a little bit of that contrast, but really nothing else uh, more than that. V8 is another, sort of thing, another thing that most beginners tend to put too much. So if you put a vignette that's big like this, that's not good. When you add a vignette, you want it to be really, really subtle. Probably just going to add a vignette here of two, one or two, where it just adds on the borders here, a little bit of darkness to bring your eye to the center of the shot, but really nothing dramatic that really shows that you have a vignette on. And now if we look at the picture, we can actually do a long press and we're going to see the original shot and the new one here. And we can see we brought back quite a lot of detail and actually going to go back to saturation, just bring back a little bit more saturation because I think it can use a little bit more. But we can see here that we had a quite gray shot at the original one. And when we let go, now we have a much uh, uh, lighter one with uh, that's a little bit more interesting to look at. So once you're satisfied with the result, we can come here, click on done, save a copy. It's going to take a few seconds to process the picture. And we're going to have the result right here. Don't stress if it comes back to your normal shot right here. Uh, if you look at the little thumbnails in the bottom here, you can actually come to the second one here and you're going to see your result here that you just edited. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. And also go check out my Instagram if you want to see other pictures I took. You can leave a comment on Instagram to let me know you would like to see how I did that shot. And I might make a video on it pretty soon. Also, let me know which app I should be showing in the next video. I was thinking of using Snapseed for the next one and probably Lightroom afterwards. Uh, but yeah, please let me know anything you like or not about this video in the comments below. Also, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. It does really help. And hit that subscribe button to learn more when I come out with new videos. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.